Alright, over the past few months I've been doing kind of a, a literary criticism of the Bible. So my plan is to read each, uh, read each chapter and respond to it. I've been doing this in my MySpace blog, so a lot of you probably haven't seen it, but I'll put a link to it up on the, on the place where you put links to stuff. And so I've gotten as far as Genesis 30, which by the way is insane. It's crazy. But um, what I intend to do right now is to go through each sort of storyline and do a video on it. Uh, you know, my, my friend The Siege has given me the idea to do this. I was going to do one on each chapter, but that would be way too many videos, and it would be way too tedious because some of the chapters are blah blah, begat blah blah, and who really cares about that? So, the first one I want to touch on is the creation story, the Adam and Eve story. And I've done at least one video on this already, but, you know, it wasn't a good video. It was it was that text junk that I was doing for a while there. So, I want to do an actual good one where I'm talking. So, here it is. Okay, so, the first, with Genesis 1 and 2, we see conflicting stories. You know, they're somewhat similar, but they're clearly written by different people. And so, I'm going to go with Genesis 2 because that's really the part that the rest of it follows. And so, uh, get my train of thought going here. Genesis 3 is really where it gets interesting, I think, because where they introduce the snake, the serpent, not the snake, the serpent, the serpent. And the serpent goes up to Eve, whose name wasn't yet Eve. Her name was Woman. Her name wasn't Eve until they were kicked out of the garden. And asks her if the god... Oh, I heard a tapping. If, you know, if, uh, if Yahweh had told them that they could eat of any tree that they wanted in the garden. And she said, oh, we can eat of any tree but this one, because if we eat from it, we'll die. And the serpent told her, no, you won't die, you'll just, you know, you'll know good and evil. You'll be like God, and God doesn't want that. And she thought, hmm, well, that sounds like a good thing, to be wise and to know good and evil. So she ate from it, she decided of her own free will, she wasn't tricked, there was no deception. In fact, actually, there was deception. The deception was on the part of God, of Yahweh, who told her that she would die that very day, or in some translations, immediately. So, and then some people say a spiritual death, but they don't mention spirits in Genesis, so there's nothing in the text to support that. At least not in this text. There might be something written later on, but you can't really say that that had anything to do with this, because there are different authors at different times, and that may have, might have been written in response to this. So, she ate, gave some to Adam. Adam decided, oh, okay, I'll eat some. And, you know, Yahweh found out later on. He didn't know immediately, and he was angry. You know, why would he get angry if he knew in advance? So, so he punished them. First, he punished the snake. He said, okay, well, you're going to have to crawl in your belly and eat dust. I guess he made him into a snake at that point. He punished the serpent, and he made him into a snake. I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing. But he said, you're going to crawl around on your belly and eat dust, and the you and the woman are going to be enemies. She's going to bruise your he her heel by stomping on your head. It's kind of weird, I don't know. I never saw any of that happening in the Bible. And... Then he told the woman, okay, you're going to have painful childbirth, uh, you're going to have to do what your husband says, and you're going to have desire for your husband. And that part I thought was really interesting, because, what, she didn't have desire for him already? And how is desire for him a punishment? 
So, anyway, the man was punished with hard work. Now you're going to have to work for your food from now on, which I guess was also Eve's punishment. But, and then Eve got the name Eve. And they were kicked out of the garden, not as part of the punishment, but in order to keep them away from the tree of knowledge, or tree of knowledge, the tree of life, which would have made them immortal, which means they would have already died eventually. They were already mortal. But they became... No, they didn't become anything. They, they would have become immortal. And since Yahweh never told them to not to eat from that tree, I wonder... You know, they, they should have had them eat from that first. But, oh well. So he kicked them out of the garden to keep them away from that. And it seems to me... And what he said before, before, just before he kicked them out, he said, oh, the people have become like us to know good and evil. Us. He was talking to somebody. He wasn't talking to Adam or Eve or an animal. He was talking to other gods. Some could say angels, but uh, again, the text doesn't support it. The text doesn't necessarily support other gods either, so we can't really assume any way about this. But anyway, he was talking to somebody. And he kicked him out, and... Well, that was that. So that's really all there is to my take on that story. I'll be back with my next one, which I guess will be about Cain and Abel. Bitches love me cause they know that I can rhyme! Bitches love me cause they know that I can rhyme!